Today we're going to be looking at Wormskin, which is a series of Dungeons and Dragons zines put out by Gavin Norman and uh, Greg Gorgonmilk. So zines are a thing that's been becoming more popular in the do-it-yourself D&D community, mostly because of how easy it is to do your own printing now. With things like Lulu and Drive Through RPG, you can put uh, a book together and get it printed in hard copy and distributed very easily. So that's what uh, these authors are doing here. They're putting together a series of zines detailing their own personal setting. So the setting's coming out in installments, if you will. Now this uh, setting is actually called Dolmenwood. So it's a fairy tale style setting set in this magical forest. Uh, it reminds me a lot of old fairy tales, Grimm's fairy tales and things like that. There's a kind of quaintness to it, uh, a little bit of whimsy, but a lot of darkness and cruelty at the same time, like a lot of old fairy tales. So let's look at what we have, starting with issue one. So the first issue, the thing that stands out um, most about a lot of these uh, zines is that there's a great use of public domain art. There's a lot of original art in here as well, but the uh, paintings that he steals from the public domain are really excellent choices and really get across the feel of the setting. Great use of the uh, borders that a lot of old books had. So the first issue starts off with the map. And like I said, there's also a, a much bigger map that you can print out as well. Uh, it also comes in a large color version, but I don't have that one with me. Uh, on the map, you can see there's a lake. There's a number of ley lines cutting through Dolmenwood and a lot of standing stones that are placed along those ley lines. And those become important. There's the setting details. We have the Moss Dwarf, which is a race class. Uh, the default setting or uh, system used for uh, worm skin is the BX D&D, um, which is the old school basic and uh, expert D&D. However, it's easily adaptable to any edition. Moss Dwarfs. What they look like. Uh, these zines are packed with random tables that can easily be stolen for uh, whatever you like. Lots of great flavorful things to spice up your Moss Dwarfs. Moss Dwarf armor. Made of birch bark, cork, hog leather, oak bark, pine cone, or ring mail. Generate Moss Dwarf NPCs. Lots of fungi, of course. Names, forms, colorations, odors, flavors, and effects when consuming these fungi. This is a great table you can steal for your own games. It uses a D30, so you kind of have to have a D30, or find a way to simulate one. Another race class, the Grimalkin, which is a cat-like creature. Cheshire cat-like, I might say. It's a type of fae creature. There are elves referred to in the setting, but they are definitely elves from old fairy tales, right? They're scary. They're from another dimension. They're otherworldly and alien. They're not your Tolkien-like uh, elves. Some new spells. Some new monsters. The root thing. And the... Oh, just the root thing. That's our first issue. Now, the issues get increasingly longer as they go on. This is our second one, issue two. He tells Langshorn. So, it shows you where it is on the map. Again, great cover art, great design work by uh, Greg Gordon Milk. This is one of my favorite tables. And it's great to steal this for any game that, you, that you're that you running. Especially if it's in a medievalish setting, they come to a tavern, you can generate the type of tavern fare available there. So for example, uh, eel stuffed, or stuffed eel with string beans. Or battered rabbit with cinnamon sauce. Lots of funny results. Psychedelic compounds. Similar to the mushroom and fungi table we saw in the previous issue. With the slang name and the effect and side effects. And of course, these can be mixed and matched together to create your own psychedelic compounds. 
Again, that's a D30 table. We're here starting to see more details of the actual setting. The high wold, and we have some hex descriptions. So 0609, 6010, 709. So that would be this area around here, or the hex is being detailed. It does assume that you're doing some type of hex crawl. Goatmen are definitely a species that you will see a lot in the woods of Dolmenwood. The village of Langshorn, the Ditchway, the King's Mounds, people in places of Langshorn. We have the details of an inn, a rumor table, always essential for running sandbox style games. And they're marked as either true or false. There is a religious element to the setting. It's assumed that the primary religion is a worldwide monotheistic religion, so it's an easy stand-in for something like Catholicism if you're running it in a Lamentations of the Flame Princess style historical world, but you can easily substitute whatever you want. And some new monsters. The Barrow Bogey. The Bog Zombie. The Woldish Goatman. The Shorthorn, the Goatman Thrall, There's lots of varieties of Goatmen that you could find. The Nightworm, the Witch Owl. That's it for our second issue. The last one is the longest so far, and it is actually in color on the interior as well, so we're going to see color art here. Um, I love the cover, I love the design of it, and uh, the fourth issue that I've seen, the cover of, which is coming out soon, also looks fantastic. So this covers a new section of Dolmenwood. It covers uh, these seven hexes right here along the lake and in the forest. The Ruined Abbey of St. Clude. This is part one. So this is going to detail uh, a ruined abbey on the surface, the surface level of it. And then the second, uh, sorry, the fourth issue, the issue that comes after this, is going to detail the catacombs and ruins underneath the surface. So it'll be the first true dungeon detailed for this setting. So we begin to have an actual timeline here. The men, goats, and fairies in Dolmenwood. You can get a sense of how the setting has evolved over time. Languages of Dolmenwood. I love this setting, or this uh, section of the book. The immortal tongue of fairy, spoken in the modern age by a vanishingly small number of individuals, only the most ancient fairies who still venture into the wood. This is the language of the most elevated denizens of the fairy realm. It is a language of such primal potency that its honeyed tones may be understood by all beings, mortal and immortal alike. No mortal may speak the undying tongue, and those who have attempted to study its treasury of words are beset by madness and misfortune. You have high elvish and you have sylvan. So there's several different languages for fairies. We have languages for the goatmen, for the uh, ancient humans who inhabit Dolmenwood, and the more modern humans. Summer stones in the witching ring. So within Dolman Wood, there's a series of ley lines, one of which is a circle anchored to a series of standing stones. This details what it's doing there, why the circle was created, and how you can affect it. We have some great original art here. And we have some more hex descriptions. The Scrabby Who Forgot His Name. The Phantom Isle. It's a great use of public domain art there. The Spire and the Summerstone. Prig Marin Hill. The Bestial Barrier. The Hermitage and the Mouse Shrine. And the Ruined Abbey. The Ruined Abbey is the main feature of this issue. The Ruined Abbey of St. Clude, Surface Ruins. We have rumors about the Abbey, and we have a map with a bell tower, a graveyard, a well, a ruined chapel. A 
there's plenty of adventures that you could have just on the surface level, going by the descriptions here. A number of children who have been kidnapped by a monster. Also, the Mother Locket, a great magical item that you could import into almost any game. Ruined Chapel. We have a lot of details of the mosaics on the walls, which give you background into the, some insight, sorry, into the religious background of the setting. Stairs to the Crypt, the Oregon, Abbott's Quarters, and some random encounters for the surface to keep things exciting. Ghostly Monk Generator. I love this. Generate their name, appearance, rank, character, and position. So, for example, Friedrich, who appears portly. His rank is a novice. He is unaware, does not know he is dead. And his position is cellarer. So you can rapidly create NPCs using this. How he likes to attack you. The Ghost's Wish and a Secret. Some new monsters of the wood. The Gloam, this is a great monster. It's uh, essentially a murder of crows that can take human form and has a lot of interesting attacks and abilities related to that. There's a picture of it. The Mogglewump. I love the names. They're a little bit Lewis Carroll-ish. Or like Mother Goose rhyme sometimes. The Scrabby. Scrike. And that's it for our third issue. So I highly recommend these. There's a lot of good uh, Dungeons and Dragons zines out there, but this one is easily my favorite. It's been coming out consistently every three months or so, and I know that the latest issue is out in PDF form, and it will be out in print form in a couple weeks, so I strongly recommend you pick that up, especially if you're looking to run a dungeon crawl beneath the Ruined Abbey of St. Clude. So, let me know what you think in the comments below. Especially let me know if you know of any other good zines that are consistently high quality and that people can use. Uh, like and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Thanks for watching.